Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and after over two years, it is time to return to Fans Project's Warbot series with Steel Core, a cold blue heartmaster who knows the truth. I want to take a second and tell you that uh, Steel Core comes with uh, the next installment of the Warbot comic book correlation, which opens up with the classic of you, Chafang moment. But there's more in this comic because it also has the truth! And it's got die and things like varhooms, screech, cor, zarom two, boom, cor el, cor, correlation, kachingza. There's also some good uh, photo instructions in here. Uh, I think these are actually even better than defenders because. It was, I, I found it very clear reading these. Uh, a lot of good, helpful stuff about tabs and whatnot. And also, it left something out, so there's a slip of paper telling you you got to turn little man's head around before you fold it down, or the entire toy will combust. Let's talk about the toy. Steel Core's larger component, Corer, is both an awesomely kludgy verbization and a powerfully beefy space truck. The alt mode is wide, flat, and looks like it could punch through a fortress wall at top speed. I love the chunky sculpt with its copious engine pipes and smokestacks, and the paintwork pops cleanly. Also, the finish on this guy is way more pretty than initial photos let on. It looks very polished. Dude can roll pretty well and has a mysterious trailer hitch that seems to tie into the box he's pulling in the comic book. And if you pop open the incredibly secure cockpit, you'll find the miniature mechanical driver known as Steel. Steel's tiny, but barely has a flat surface on him when viewed from the front or sides. The rear is... don't look at him from behind, that's just rude. His colors are simple, but paint is involved, and I love that he has some small red and silver apps on his face. His size is almost identical to Fans Project's Sidearm and Blesser, but Steel is a lot more poseable. His neck joint has a ton of range for such a small figure, and I find my only qualm is that his ball-jointed shoulders only really have meaningful motion going forward and backward. This is all a great bonus, though, as his true purpose is to transform and correlate with Korror. This engineering goes the extra mile with a very cool bisecting torso fold and several tabs to lock steel into his Heartmaster mode. And those tabs throw back to the incredibly solid way that steel's vehicle mode is held together. This guy is an absolute joy to transform, feeling as though he took into account every single criticism and comment of complication that Defender received. Untabbing everything does need a bit of care, but the plastic feels durable enough to take it. Just don't rip things apart. The whole process is yet another example of a simple transformation with intricate and satisfying engineering. Even the weapon is integrated, remaining in Core Roar's grip throughout the conversion. Attaching Steel completes the robot mode, and Steel Core stands ready for action. This guy looks beautiful from every angle. Granted, I also dig the Warbot sculpting aesthetic, so if that doesn't jive with you, that may diminish all of the angles and surface detailing. I especially like that he has a very unique look when viewed from the rear, with wheels flat against the back of his limbs and the cockpit window forming his spine. And the colors look so slick in person! I thought Steel Core would have a very flat and drab finish, and I am happy to say that is not the case. He has clean paint apps everywhere, striking lining on his facial details, and a lovely sheen to finish everything off. Steel's lighter blue does stick out a bit against Core's darker blue, but I don't feel it's to any detriment. There are also some cool bits of sculpting hidden within Steel Core. His shoulders open to reveal a barrage of Macross missile spam. And if Steel decores and disengages, he reveals a fully sculpted and painted chest cavity. Steel Core's weapon has a lot of moving parts and several functions. Aside from being the trailer hitch in vehicle mode and remaining in his hand through any transformation, it can turn into a rifle that covers Steel Core's entire hand. I love that it's not just a simple single swivel joint, but instead three hinges acting in tandem. Folding the weapon into a stacked configuration and adding a clear green energy effect part creates Steel Core's melee weapon. It looks cool and holds together solidly, but the green piece has nowhere to go when it isn't in this mode. It can't form a bayonet for the rifle or store in Steel Core's vehicle mode, and that is a shame given how intelligent the rest of this figure's engineering has been. Nonetheless, this does not diminish its one place of use. Overall, I think the weapon turned out pretty great. 
Talking posability on this guy involves talking about a ball joint. It's a bunch. His head's on a ball joint. It's a good one. It's emotive. It tilts forward, backward, every way. He can waggle his head and just tell you whatever he wants to tell you about. But we're not going to go into that too much. We're going to keep things nice and sedate here. We're talking about steel core. Cold colors, cold emotions. Ball jointed shoulder. And even though the shoulder armor is enormous, the range on this is also enormous. But if you don't want this thing, you know, banging against his own head, uh, there is a decent amount of outward movement on here. Thanks to the transformation, there's actually a double jointed outward movement on here involving a ball joint and a swivel joint. His elbows are only single jointed. But I don't care. I, I, it's okay. It's fine. I'm, I'm trying to get over it. Uh, the bicep swivel is there thanks to the ball joint, but there are no wrist joints, and I kind of wish there were, mostly because of this weapon. If this thing had a wrist joint, I think you could accomplish a lot more with this uh, melee weapon looking thing. Uh, for now, he mostly can just look menacing with it, but uh, I think he could have looked menacing-er if this thing could have tilted at the wrist. Uh, and, and the reason why I don't mind these single jointed elbows is part of the overall message of this toy, which is that it does a lot of things simply, but it does them well. And for a toy that can only bend his elbow 90 degrees, he does it really well and he wears it well. I'm not sure how I can put that any, uh, any differently. Let's move on to the weird joints. This dude's waist. Uh, you have to unclip the cockpit to access these joints, which is odd, but that way he gains a waist... Uh, swivel, which is centralized here, which seems weird. It seems like it's for transformation, but it's not. He also has an ab crunch. It's weird. It opens up this, this large gap here. You can cover it up with the cockpit so it looks okay, but it's also centralized here. It feels like it's for some kind of transformation, but there are, is no transformation step involving anything in the torso. I feel like this is something that may be part of something we don't know about yet, or it's just the only place they could fit a joint and still have this open cockpit area. Nonetheless, it does give you a lot of cool options for having this guy kind of like bend over and then look forward and look like he's he's in the midst of action. Speaking of being in the midst of action, I'm just gonna show you part of my point about his lower body now. This guy is dead solid everywhere from the legs down. Uh, he's also pretty good up here, but man, this dude's got like ball jointed hips. He's got a thigh swivel. He's got double jointed knees, so I can't do my little complaint about double jointing anything here. He's if, if anything. The knees, I wish they kind of had a locking point forward, because it's easy to uh, have them go from being like this to being like this. Maybe that's a preference thing, maybe it, it's it's nicer for aesthetics, or it's nice to have the choice. Um, I find it's a little, just a little bit haphazard in there, because I'm never sure where I'm supposed to put it. And, uh, he has fantastic ankles. Uh, these are just ball joints, but they have, like, an actual, like, tilted cut there to allow them to turn even more sideways than they normally would. And he has a toe joint! And what I love about this toe joint is it actually works. This is a toe joint that this bulky robot can make use of and not feel like he's going to fall over in any way, shape, or form uh, unless you, like, literally tilt him forward far enough for gravity to take control. I was really surprised by how stable he was in poses that involved basically leg positions like this. Like, uh, he is not standing on a lot of plastic, but he is, he is dead solid in this pose. And I think this is owed to, in part, by his lack of die cast. Uh, I'm sure that is a, a, a downer for some, but I think it really helped this guy pretty much have a, a very well-done center of balance. And the fact that he's able to pull off just these kind of, like, wild poses uh, right after being what looked like a, a sort of rigid military stance robot, uh, I think this is, this is amazing, uh, just how how evocative this guy's body looks in these poses and how he's able to hold them without falling down. Uh, so he's not super poseable. He's missing a couple joints in his arms I would have liked to see, double joints and wrists, but everything he does, he does incredibly well. Really well. So uh, kudos, Steel Core. You are a poseable bro. Just don't, you know, like like walk up to him and poke him too much or he might... He might... I don't want to mess with him anymore. I think he's going to kick my ass. Fans Project took several gambles with this figure. It's the first release through their Fans Project core website. It's their first attempt at the Heartmaster gimmick, and it does not immediately resemble any specific Transformers franchise character at first glance. While there are Armada Overload design cues, and the Heartmaster gimmick is clearly an homage to the classic Power Masters, Steel Core is easy to regard as one of the most original releases Fans Project has ever done. And I think they hit it out of the park! Steel Core delivers on a lot of very simple strengths. 
He feels like the result of a matured company, not reaching for engineering extremes, but also excelling in the core competencies of a transforming robot toy. He's solid, looks great, and represents a place that all third-party companies may need to consider moving towards. I want to see great independent transformer engineering thrive and survive in a way that eventually does not rely on throwbacks to the capital T transformers beyond homages like Steel's Heartmaster functionality. And I think Steel Core gives us a glimpse of where things can go. Unless you simply don't like his base aesthetics, I would absolutely recommend Steel Core to anybody that gets a chance to purchase him in a future production run. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelus, Steel Core Order number 38, and an emissary of the Beta Exodus.